Next, let us look at allocation of common cause. There could be certain common cause. We do not know how to allocate that. You, you saw the fixed cause in the previous example, right? Uh, right, so how do you allocate? Uh, how do you allocate the common cause which cannot be traced to any particular uh, segment? Right? <clears throat> These are common cause. They would have been incurred even if that particular segment is, is discontinued. So, so in our previous example, even if I were to stop beverages, the CEO of the company has to be paid salaries. Yes or no? So this becomes a common cost. Yes or no? So how do you allocate? So these are allocated on some arbitrary basis since cost effect uh, relationship may be difficult to establish. Head office cost, central support cost. Yes or no? There is a head office. All other segments work around. The head office caters to the uh, overall needs of all the other branches. Maybe. Yes or no? Like I said, the CEO salary, who will bear it? it, it it's a common cost. It's a common cost. <clears throat> but you need to allocate common cost. Before I tell you what are the uses of allocation of common cost, a small variation, a shared services cost. Sometimes a fine distinction is drawn between shared services cost and common cost. Shared services indicate that the service is shared they say that it may be easier uh, easier to allocate these costs because what are what basis are they shared on what is the allocation what is, what basis are they shared on accordingly they may be allocated right say for example it services used by departments may be allocated on the basis of it hours used shared services costs may be allocated therefore there is a more logical basis for allocating the shared services cost. Like I said, a fine difference is strong. Now, what is the reason for allocating common cost? Why do you have to allocate? I don't need to allocate. After all, the segment manager is not responsible for it, right? But look at what happens when you allocate. First and foremost, managers are aware that support cost exists. So when the when the say soaps and detergent department or segment is making a dollar, uh, making a profit of sixty or sixty two thousand dollars, they should not be content with the sixty two thousand dollars for that month because they must understand that it is not really fully sixty two thousand. Some part of these these profits, these margins will go to meet to meet the common cost. Will go to meet. So you have to be conscious that you won't get all of the 62,000. Some of it is still going to go to meet the uh, cost, meet some costs. Right? So managers will understand that some part of their profits will cover the common cost. And since all the costs have to be covered, we need to allocate them. Uh, we need to, need to allocate them. See, ultimately the product, when you come, ultimately the product, the cost of a product, uh, should, should, when we talk of the cost of a product, it should have uh, include all the costs which are incurred by the particular organization. Yes or no? So how to fairly, uh, fairly distribute this? You must understand that even if the beverages division was closed down, CEO salaries would have to be paid. Yes or no? It's, so, that, so the salaries paid to the CEO cannot in any way be linked to the soap and detergent or the beverages or other conditions, other set. Yes or no? And of course, when there is shared services, the managers will know the cost of the use of shared services services, and use them with care. Right? In case of shared services, I know the IT hour, each hour that I'm consuming is actually, it amounts to maybe $75, whatever the price. So, managers become. So, managers should realize, should be aware that the support must exist. Allocation has to be made. The total cost when you take the cost of a particular product or segment, ultimately, all the costs which are incurred by the organization have to uh, have to be accounted for and have to be shared by the different segments. What are the methods of allocating common uh, costs? There are two methods. One is the standalone method, and the other is the incremental method. So let us try to understand. 
what is the stand alone method in a stand alone method each user is considered as a separate entity and the common cause are apportioned proportionately like it services like we said maybe on the basis of some hours on some reasonable basis this is proportion of the total cost or the proportion of total sales or the cost driver so maybe based on the number of hours used maybe some some of the costs may be on the basis say for example shipping cost may be transportation cost may be on the basis of the uh, total sales value or value and so on and so forth on some proportion they are <coughs> they are allotted right stand alone so what hap that that's a stand alone Incremental is very different stories. In incremental, you have to first identify a primary user, and then identify each additional user. Each additional user. Primary user is charged with the fixed cost and some part of the variable variable cost. Bulk of the cost is taken by the primary user because even if the others did not use the primary user, the first person would have incurred these costs. <coughs> All additional cost, incremental user is charged only with the additional cost. So all additional costs are only charged to the incremental user. The best thing to do is to understand this with example. So let's take an example. Understand both the methods. See, you have a big subdivision and a small subdivision. Okay, the big subdivision needs to send a consignment to this destination. And the small subdivision needs to send consignment to the destination A. So you have two, two, two units, two segments, two units of the same organization. I've just named them big subdivision and small division. B has to send a consignment to our destination. S has to send another consignment to destination two. <coughs> and the shipping costs. What are the shipping costs? <coughs> In order to pay, the shipping cost happens to be two hundred dollars from uh, to destination one and one eighty dollars to destination two. This is the situation. So, so B may transfer will spend two hundred dollars. S may also transfer will spend one eighty dollars. Fine. However, however. These two units, these two destinations, are very close to one another. They are nearly at the same place. They are very, very close to one another. Do you understand? So, but the organization is going to make two shipping, two, 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 two separate shipments, and incur a total cost of four eighty. I mean, three eighty in this particular case. Yes or no? So now there is a small uh, option. Since when, when we see that these two destinations are very close, we say, let us do one thing. Let us combine this and send it as one lot. In that case, the cost would be two hundred and fifty, slightly more than this two hundred, but it is not three hundred and eighty. It is only two hundred and fifty. Combined shipping cost is two hundred and fifty. Got it? In a stand alone, so 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 students, this is the position. And this is the position. In a standalone method, in a standalone method, what you would do is this cost of now see this two hundred and fifty has to be shared between B and S. This is the position. How will you share it? In a standalone method, it is done in a proportion. Maybe it could be taken in the proportion of two hundred is to one eighty. These would have been the costs otherwise. Now the cost is two hundred and fifty. So let us take it in this ratio. Allocated in the ratio of two hundred is to one eighty. Fifty three percent and forty seven percent of two fifty is one ten. Stand alone method in a weighted manner, in a proportionate manner. Maybe based on the sales. Maybe based on these costs in this particular case on some suitable basis. They are two separate entities. Alert. Who will bear the cost independently? That is how it is done in the stand alone. One thirty-three and hundred and seventy. Here the allocated fixed cost would therefore be one thirty-three and hundred and seventy. Clear? 
what will happen in the incremental thing did you understand students what you do in incremental you have to identify a primary user who is the primary user let us say the big division is the primary user then then the small division is a secondary user we need to identify this may sometimes be subjective and that perhaps is a drawback of the incremental anyway so if big subdivision is the primary user it means that the primary user would have anyway incurred two hundred dollars. So let the primary user incur two hundred dollars. Let the remaining fifty be taken up. The extra cost, the additional cost, be taken up by the additional user, the secondary user. Followed. So big subdivision is allocated two hundred dollars. Small subdivision is allocated. The basis, the additional cost, incremental cost over the charge to the primary user over the charge to the primary user. Followed? Is it clear students? Standalone method, incremental method. So under the standalone method what did we do? We took the 250 apportioned in the ratio of 200 and 180. But under under the, the incremental method we, uh, we have to we first need to identify who the primary user is. Assuming that the big subdivision is the primary user the, 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 the logic is, the rationale is that since anyway the big division would have incurred 200, 200 is charged to the primary user and the additional 50 is charged to the additional user, the secondary user. Of course, disadvantages of the incremental method is every manager wants to be the incremental user, they will be charged with the less cost. Yes or no, this may of course lead to some, some conflict. And that could also be subject to a bit of manipulation. But this is very useful to assess the viability of a new unit. When you are doing a new unit, you can always check what are the additional costs, what are the additional revenues and take a decision. This is actually a, a, an advantage. <coughs> That is the benefit. This is 